Welcome to Graphics Card Repairs. My name is Fraser and today we are going to talk about upgrading the RTX 3070 from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes and why this upgrade is crucial for gamers. You see, as games evolve, they crave for more video memory. Having that extra VRAM can significantly enhance your performance and make your gaming session smoother and more enjoyable. So let's get started. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritties. The 8GB VRAM limit on the RTX 3070 is a challenge for many gamers out there. What happens is that in demanding games, you may experience stuttering, lag, or even crashes. Games like Cyberpunk 2077, Last of Us Part 1, or Flight Simulator can push that limit, leaving players frustrated when they are trying to immense themselves in amazing graphics. Plus, with the gaming industry pushing for higher resolution and more detailed textures, that 8GB is looking smaller every day. And let's be real, if you want to future-proof your rig for upcoming games, you're going to need that extra memory. It's like trying to fit a big piece of puzzle into a tiny spot. That just doesn't work, isn't it? Now, let's talk tech. VRAM, or Video Random Access Memory, is like the short-term memory for your GPU. It stores textures, images, and other data needed for rendering graphics. So when you increase your VRAM from 8GB to 16GB, you're allowing your graphics card to load more data at once, which can lead to smoother gameplay. In today's gaming landscape, as resolution soars to 4K and beyond, and as games get more complex with rich textures and environments, the demand for VRAM is skyrocketing. Just think about it. If you're playing a game that's using up all your VRAM, your GPU is going to start pulling that system RAM, which is way slower. Not ideal, right? This upgrade could be a game changer, literally. So here's the exciting part. I'll be showing you the secrets how to upgrade the RTX 3070 from 8GB to 16GB. We're going to dive into the world of hardware modification. I can't wait to share the step-by-step -step process with you, showing you every detail on how this can be done. Imagine the thrill of boosting your gaming performance and diving into your favorite titles with enhanced visuals and smoother frame rates. The potential benefits in these upgrades are massive. This is going to be a two-part series of the upgrade process. In this video, we are going to make the hardware modification and get the card ready to boot. In part two of the upgrade, we are going to look at how we can resolve the issues that we face after the upgrade is completed and run a couple of benchmarks and run some games to test the GPU. Before we start, I would like to mention this. Do not try what I'll be showing you if you do not have the experience in reballing BGA chips. Graphics card repairs or any of its associates are not responsible for the actions you take. Now, with that out of the way, let's continue. On my workbench is a Zotac RTX 3070 that's going to be our test subject. To start, I will dismantle the GPU down to the PCB. Now, this GPU currently has Samsung 1 GB memory module, which I will replace to 2 GB. The replacement memory I have right now is a 2 GB 14 gigabits per second Samsung memory. The part number, I will flash it on the screen, just in case if you would want to make a note of it. So let's start the replacement process. I'm going to preheat the board and then use hot air from top. So let's start.
Now that we have replaced the memory, it's time to run the memory test to check if everything is installed correctly. Running Mats, we can see that Mats has passed and our memory is installed correctly. The next step is to change the straps. The question is, what is straps? In simple words, on a GPU board, there is a chip that holds the scripts that communicate with the PC and also controls the power, the fan curve, and also how the core and the memory should function. The script is called BIOS. Now, straps, on the other hand, are resistors of 100 kilo ohms each, which tells the BIOS which memory is installed on the PCB of the GPU. The BIOS reads commands in binary codes like ones and zeros. These registers, called straps, provide those commands in ones and zeros. So when a register is connected to 1.8 volts, it indicates 1. And if that same register is connected to ground, it indicates 0. So the binary code required for the BIOS to recognize that there is a 2GB Samsung memory module installed is 1, 1, and 0. Then the BIOS will send the required data to the PC and the drivers will act accordingly. Now the tricky part was that I didn't have the schematics nor a board view for this GPU. After poking around for eons, I found the area that the register needs to be connected and I switched the register to indicate 1, 1 and 0. I then assembled the GPU back again and put it on my test bench. It installed the drivers just fine and upon opening GPU-Z, it showed us that it's now reading 16 gigabytes. Wow! I then ran Fermark to test if the GPU was steady. It ran fine, but when I stopped the test, I got a black screen. At this point, I thought, could it be that the batch of memories I received are faulty? I then disassembled the GPU and reballed the GPU core, thinking the problem may be with the solder joints underneath the core. But that was not the case. So at this point, I decided to replace the memory. Instead of 14 gigabits per second, I thought let's install 16 gigabits per second memory modules, as I did not have a separate batch of 14 gigabits per second memory modules. I will flash the part number of the 16 gigabits per second memory modules on your screen just in case for your reference. So I then installed this memory, assembled the GPU, ran the test again. The GPU ran fine as long as it was under stress and as soon as I stopped the stress, it would go back to a black screen. I ran tests like Superposition, Heavens and Fermark and it all did the same thing. I also wanted to test and check if it would utilize the extra memory that I have installed. So I ran OCCT. The first run was with a small memory portion so that you know I know it's not going to just crash out. The second run was utilizing 90% of the installed memory. You can see on the screen that it is utilizing just over 14 gigabytes of installed memory. Just like the other test, it would give a black screen after I stopped the test run. So our experiment is working, but we need to fix the black screen after the load is released. My assumption right now, it could be the power delivery to the memory. Let me show you. These MOSFETs that deliver power to the memory rail are just rated 30 amps with 12 volts input. Now with my power supply, also dropping the voltage to around 11 volts can be another issue as well. So, we have a work cut out for the second part of this upgrade journey, where we will try and fix the black screen issue and run some benchmarks and a couple of games. I hope you like this video and if you do, hit the like and subscribe to let YouTube know so it can do its thing. You can also support my channel by joining in monthly or using the thanks button to contribute one time. Your contribution means a lot to me and will help me produce more of these upgrade videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. Cheers.